This week I was in Lancaster, what? Pennsylvania. And I spoke on Thursday and Friday to an audience of about maybe 400 or so at a conference. There were all races there, but mostly white Americans. One of the questions that was asked of me, because I kept telling white Americans that they need to be of courage, they need to speak up, they need to speak the truth to black Americans, they need to tell the truth. And so people were asking me, but what is the truth? Are you saying, quote the Bible to them? What do you mean by tell the truth? And then I said, well, are you afraid to speak up to black Americans? Most of them say yes, they are afraid. And so I said to them, well, is that truth you need to start dealing with? Because in that moment, a discussion is happening, you need to be honest about it. And the truth is not something that you can prepare to say. You have to wait for the moment to speak the truth. But what I realized from that is that so many people are into learning the Bible that they think, they don't know that the, the truth is in our hearts and that in the moment God is with you with that truth and that is the truth you should speak whatever the issue may be. But they, they, they're kind of lost if, they, if they're not able to just quote the Bible in the moment. And God has written the truth in our hearts. It's in our hearts. And we should, if we are born again of him, we are guided by that truth. And so, but you can never ever plan what you're gonna say. That's why I, over the last 20 years, I've never written a speech and when I do interviews and things like that, I just want to know what subject you want to talk about. But I wait and see so that the truth can be spoken on that. But if you don't know the truth is in your heart and you're not discover that truth and live it from that truth, then you will be afraid. Because if you don't have the Bible with you and you can't quote scriptures, you would be afraid to speak up. But it's in our heart and most people have not found that in their heart. Isn't that sad to be a Christian and not discover the truth in your heart, it's as though there's a belief that God is great and good and that he loves us, but not enough to equip us. And it just doesn't make sense that the God who is of truth will only put the truth in a Bible, you know, in a book. And now you gotta carry this book around in order to live and function. Somebody asks you something, you got to say, well, 1 John chapter 3, <laughs> verse 8 said, blah, blah, blah. You should be able to speak to that, to, to that issue right then and there with truth. And most people, I'm sad, not, I don't feel sorry for, for people, but it's sad to see that most Christians are not awake. They have not awakened. They're, they're not, they're guided by the Bible, and then when they see me speaking, they say, wow, there's something different about you. I, I can, there's something special. I can see that you're a little different than everybody else. But then when I try to tell them what it is, you know, how I got there, what it is, they, try, they, they reject it. Some do, most, I mean, most do, some don't. But they reject it because they're so conditioned the other way that the, the Bible is the word of God and that's it. There's no more to it, no more to it. But God's word is life, it's a living thing. And so it's constantly living and giving you life and giving you understanding because it's a living, the living word. And people gotta find that in their hearts so that they can move by it and live by it and trust that. The devil words are living words too, but they kill you. They bring on distress and worry and doubt. Because you got to listen to one of the words, one or the other. You're listening to one or the other. The one that brings doubt and worry are the ones that give you life and hope. That makes sense? Yes, sir. So it is written in the heart. Yes, sir. Uh, could you expand a little bit more on uh, the, the living truth in the moment and the devil's lies are living? The primary way, I believe, the right way to live, the living word, is to become a non-judgmental person, a non-decision-making person, when you can just walk by faith and not by sight. People who make decisions are walking by sight. They're deciding right and wrong, good and evil, right versus wrong, right? But people who live by faith 
of just living by faith, living by what they can see and not judging what's going on. Not even about what they can see, because when you see it, you see that it's right. But if you want to know what the living word is like, you got to give up judging good and evil in any form, any aspect of your life. You got to be able to just see it. And you're going to see the reality of what's going on and deal with it. But you got to resist that temptation of the devil telling you that's bad, that's good, that's evil, that's that. When you hear that voice telling you that, omit it. But when you can see it for yourself, you also see what to do about it. It's a, the voiceless voice is the one that you want to live by. So the, the Bible is like dead or it's old? Oh, the Bible is just a road map back to the truth in your heart. The Bible, the living word is in your heart. It's written in your heart. And the Bible tells you that. Somebody, it would be like me writing down right now. This week I write a book that says, the living word is in your heart. The word been made flesh. Here's where you, this, here's how you get there. You, you sit still and pray. You don't need to whimper, and whine and beg and hoop and holler. Make sure you get up every morning early. Seek him early so you can find him and be still and know him. Uh, before you enter into this living word, you got to forgive. And, and so, and I'll hand that out to you. That's not the living word. That's just the word to tell you where to find it. But the problem is people are putting the Bible as the living word, and it's just an instruction book. If you really see the Bible the way it is, it just tells you what to do, what not to do. Here's what happened to John Doe when he did this. Here's what happened to John Doe when he did that. Don't do these things, and here's why. When you do good, this will happen. When you do wrong, this will happen. But the people have taken it and just totally omitted the living word in their heart. They have mentioned it, but they have no relationship with it. And I find that a whole lot of folks don't have that relationship with it. If I didn't have it, I wouldn't be able to stand here and tell you about it because I wouldn't know it either. I wouldn't know how to do it, live that way if it wasn't working already in my life. Because most people don't believe that that's possible. How do you tell someone, okay, stop judging, period. Don't judge anything as right or wrong. And, and, and while at the same time you have your mind working overtime doing exactly that. And it sounds like your voice. And it looks like what this person is doing is wrong. And it is wrong, but you can't judge it. Because when you judge, you become God. And when you become God, you separate, you're separated from the true God to be your own God. And so how do you tell people to live that way, you know? It, it's, it's interesting. Because, you, it, because it's spiritual, you cannot give it up yourself. Of yourself, you could do nothing. But it was taken away from me by allowing me to see in this other manner. Because that is what the mind would do. Okay, I got to give up judgment. And now you're out there working overtime trying not to judge. I'm not going to judge that. And the devil's like, you're a lie. You see, you know, you're judging it. Even that is judgment. It's a, it's a voiceless uh, discernment that you live by. It's just a seeing, and it's seeing you know what's right and wrong. It is so nice, too. I wish I could give it to you. But of ourselves, we could do nothing. It has to happen. It's a spiritual thing that takes place. You can't make it happen on your own. But no, I didn't give it up myself. I didn't know you could give it up. It was just taken away from me by allowing me to see when the temptation come to do it. Because the devil will tempt you. Somebody asked, does the devil tempt you once you, quote, unquote, enter into the kingdom? Yes. But you can see him. You know the difference between the two voices. That voice that you hear is of the devil, the one that's judged for you, makes you feel like you're judging, and all that kind of stuff. But this other quiet voice is just annoying. You just kind of know. And it's not like annoying that you hear the word annoying. You hear the words. It's not even like that. It's like a, it's like a, a revelation of something. You realize something. In every area of life that has to operate, it operates in that manner as needed. 
And so when the devil talked to you, you now know that's not the voice. Without even saying it, you just know because you know this other voice. The Bible says that uh, my children shall know my voice. But most Christians don't know God's voice because if they did, they wouldn't listen to this voice in their head, in their imagination. You think, feel, and act. But in this discernment, there is no thinking or feeling. And even when you see a person wrong, you feel nothing about that person being wrong. It doesn't feel personal to you. You're not angry at them for being that way. You almost have a sense of compassion for them because you realize that they cannot see. And it has nothing to do with you. It's all about them. They are having that issue. Even though they may try to hurt you with their issue, you still know that it's not them. And that way you don't have any feelings about it. Isn't that something? Uh-huh.